Hola, you amazing artists. Today it's just me, please not feeling so well. And I decided I was going to answer some of the questions that you guys have sent that uh, don't require a long video. Tips for artists because he loves you. First question is from Deddy Bensick. I hope I said that right. Hi, I have my first solo exhibition later this year. I'm very excited, but at the same time, I have social anxiety and freaking out. Yes, don't worry about that. We all have a little bit of social anxiety. And I need labels for my paintings. I'm on a tight budget now. Do you have any advice, DIY solution for that? It would be a lifesaver. All of my solutions when it comes to doing an art show, they are all DIY. Yes, I do have a solution. All you need to do is buy some cardstock printer paper and you could print these labels out yourself. Pretty much what I'll do is I'll uh, just type this out, make it bold, maybe about 16 for the size of the font. And then what I do is I put the name, the medium, on what surface, the size, original art by Rafi Perez, the price, and then my website. Then this goes taped just with blue tape on the wall. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. You just put it by the painting and you're all done. That's all you need. This shouldn't be an expensive part because these are throwaway things. Just get some cardstock and you can print these out yourself and just cut them into a nice rectangular shape and you're all set. Black Cat 2 asked, I like the rambles. Good video and a great subject. I have a question though. What kind of car is that car at the end of the videos? At the end of my videos where you see the total awesomeness and it comes down, there's a little car insignia there. That car is the Explorer. It was a vehicle that we had after I left the corporate world and things in my life kind of fell apart into shambles and I had nothing left and I had an old 92 Ford Explorer. At that point I had decided that I wanted to go and see the country, that I wanted to go and travel, which it's funny because I had no money, I had no sense of security, I had no nothing, but I think because I had already lost everything, everything that I was always vying to try and save. So my plan was to travel the country, explore, see the sights, see all the natural wonders in this country, and um, I was gonna take the Explorer and do it. And thus I had, that's, that's where the name Rafi was here comes from. The Explorer took on a overhaul. We basically tore it apart, put in a rollaway bed, under cabinets, side cabinets, solar panels, the whole nine yards. And we traveled the country for about two years and the Explorer became part of our, our family. You know, it was, it was something, it was something quite, quite amazing. It was our purple cow. A couple of years ago when my son called and said that he wanted to come and visit, we realized that the Explorer just wasn't going to make it. It was on its last leg. How it got us around the country for two years, I have no idea. But uh, we we decided at that point that uh, we did not want to take it to a junkyard. We did not want to just leave it in the yard where it would deteriorate and fall apart. And so we donated it. And both Klee and I cried a lot. So so yeah, that's the car that you see at the end of the, the videos. Gina Marie, do you have to do videos in order to be able to make a living as an artist? Honestly, the videos don't really produce that much of an income. I mean, I am a YouTube partner, so we do make a little tiny, tiny little bit of money monthly from YouTube. But as far as it promoting my art or getting my art out there. Um, my videos are mostly geared towards artists. My channel isn't really geared towards selling art. Uh, it's more geared towards talking about the topic of art with other artists. I didn't create an art career based on my YouTube channel or on any social media. My art career was formed from face-to-face -face interaction with people at festivals or at markets, uh, at, at any different venue that I could put my artwork up. This town doesn't necessarily have that many galleries, and the galleries that it does have are co-op gallery. My art career, I had to get started from the ground up. I didn't have any help from a gallery. I didn't have any additional money to get me started. Um, basically I got started at the flea market and then I started doing the farmer's market. From there, there was a gallery night that happened every month and we did gallery night. And then we started doing some festivals and some shows and there were other art walks that were going on in the surrounding towns. Pretty much anything that we could set up for ourselves to show our work every month. 
Um, that's what we did. That's how we created our art career. YouTube had nothing to do with it. Our social media had nothing to do with it. I mean, we had no social media presence. We had no YouTube presence. I was just doing videos because I wanted to communicate what I had learned. I started doing the videos because I wanted to document for myself what I had learned or what I had experienced in uh, in trying to grow in our career because I desperately searched for information out there on how to get it done. But there were so many different opinions on how to get your career started and none of them seemed to work with what I wanted. There was a there's a lot of cookie cutter opinions out there that I just didn't didn't feel that they were me or what I wanted to do. So I wanted to do these videos as a reminder to myself of what I had picked up, what I had learned, what I had experienced. And I figured that if I did these videos that they would be helpful to anybody else that was in my shoes. I, I, and I'm not saying that that can't be done. I'm sure that there are a lot of artists out there that use YouTube to sell their art. As you know, in my videos, I barely ever show my art. It's just me and my face talking. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't, that, that might be something that you could do and you could tell me all about it. She also says, I have no idea how you managed to actually make art with all the stuff that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it could get challenging. I'm still working on a balance of, uh, doing this uh, and also doing my art because Right now with uh, Patreon and with hitting 10,000 subscribers, like it's actually become a little bit more real for me. So um, I want to make sure that the content that I'm putting out there is very genuine and very honest. I've always viewed YouTube as a creative endeavor. I always view my music and my artwork and anything that I do that is creative, basically anything that I do that is not necessary to do in life, that I do because I really, really want to and I feel the need to. Ironically, in the past, I've tried to give up YouTube and it always feels like there's something missing. Uh, the same way that if I don't create any art, it feels like something is missing. So I, it's all about striking a balance between your creative projects. It's about not overwhelming yourself with all the things that you have to do, but understanding and getting into the mindset of you have time to work on the things that you really want to create. And in order to get to that place where you are working on the things that you really want to create, honestly, you have to take money out of the equation because money seems to... Uh, complicate things a little bit. You start creating things because you think that you're going to make money doing it, whether it is YouTube videos or artwork or uh, music, a new song or something. The motivation behind the creation of said thing uh, gets, gets distorted. So the end product isn't as amazing as it would be if you set out to create it just just to create it it's it's a balance you have to strike a balance there pam asks what is the benefit of taking on commissions taking on commissions forces you sometimes to uh create something that is outside of your comfort zone there are some commissions that right off the bat i'm like no no way i'm not taking that on because there's something disturbing about it that I don't want to do. But for the most part, I will take on commissions because they'll push me outside of my comfort zone. And honestly, I'm a big believer that you really don't know what you like until you try it. There, There's a lot of us artists that will say like, well, I don't do that or I don't do that and never try something, never push themselves outside of that comfort zone. And in all honesty, to me, you don't know if you like something until you actually try it. I'm a big believer that you should create what it is that you want to create. But do you really know what it is that you want to create until you've tried to create all the things that have presented themselves to you? I've done corporate commissions where I have told the story of a company and did it my way, found a way to do it my way. I've done corporate commissions where it was the person's logo. I remember thinking to myself like, no, that's not what I do. That's not original. And then thinking like, okay, so here's the challenge for you because you do want to see this thing come to life, but you want to see it created your way. 
How are you going to take this, not create a cookie cutter piece, create something that is completely original, even though you're using a corporate logo to make it yours, not to just create something that somebody else could create, even though it needs to meet the specifications of the client that's buying it. Little did I know that taking on that corporate commission was going to lead to a full on series of pieces that uh, have wording across them, which I absolutely love. Yeah, take on as much as you can. If you you know for sure like no this is not something that i want to do um then don't do it but if it's ego popping in and being like a real artist blah blah just take it on take it on and try it see if you like it if you do you do if you don't you don't and that's that's the best way to figure that out at least for me and that's it you guys hopefully i answered those questions to a satisfactory degree and if you have any more questions for us, just leave them in the comment section below. We are getting a lot of comments, but we still manage to read them. So even if we don't respond to you, just know that we are reading your comments. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Oh, there's no say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios. <laughs>